Okay, this is take five, and I'm pissed off. Man, my videos have not been working good. Man, I've been ranting, and like, you know, I'm, I'm at this, uh, what do you want to call this, a Vina del Sol in Rusa, out here in beautiful Durango, and pouring my heart out here. Look at this. You know, I think really deep down, you know, I'm 41, thanks Jesus. Holy shit. There you go, 41, Jonathan Benoji. I was born Jonathan Spears. Jonathan Matthew Spears. Matthew on the holla, okay? Then Spears. Then my mom married a guy, we think, from Pakistan. He later said Malaysia, but then he kind of did a double on that. And on 9-11, he told us not to tell anybody. He was, we like, nigga, we're thinking you're from Pakistan. Like, what, Malaysia? We, it's like he didn't think. Anyway, so we were from Oklahoma. My mom, beautiful my mom. I mean, and, you know, I, I have to pray for my mom. You know, I'm one of those, I'm one of those ravens that has to pray for his family because I love Jesus. And I pray for people all the time that uh, I know are lost. And this journey of raven... It's what I'm called homeless because I want to destigmatize homeless people because how feminism has just notice how that there's this movement of feminism using the word homeless very very pejoratively almost like if you said cunt you know uh, and the equivalent of homeless is calling a woman a cunt and I know that's not acceptable so I want to call Kathy at Mana a cunt, I want to call Durango, adult education, woman a cunt, because, well, I got kicked out of Mana. There's, Mana is a soup kitchen here in Durango, it's run by some angels, but there's some evil people there, and then there's even some financial malfeasance, and there's a lot of corruption, and there's a lot of people from Mana, this beautiful Durango, I love this city, fuck this city, I love it. Just a lot of selfish people. Well, it's so funny how liberal people are often selfish people, but the Republicans are dumb and selfish. So it's like you got to pick, you know. So, all right. That's why I voted for Ben Carson. I was, when I moved here, I had, I had a, a roommate, and I was a Ben Carson libertarian. <laughs> She's one of the staunch feminist people. And then I was going through a civil case, and my ex-wife uh, went cunt, and she... You know, she's one of those women that calls CPS because there's this cottage industry of, um, well, it's propagated by lawyers because you can really get what you want in any civil case. But if you really want to really, really retaliate at your, uh, your ex-husband, just call the CPS in. And in, in, in the state of Texas, um, 70% of divorce modifications are punctuated with divorce, uh, excuse me, with abuse allegations. Of some kind. Think, just think of the numbers. Like that's literally Auschwitz level numbers. Like, you know, we 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 are still concerned that somehow, in some way, six million Jews, beautiful ravens, were sent to gas chambers in Auschwitz. And and then we have Golda Meir, and then the wonderful Steven Spielberg in Munich, and she has this wonderful phrase, and she says. Nobody cares about dead Jews. And Golda Meir, now if you want feminism, that's feminism. That's badass. Feminism used to be legit. Feminism used to be about, used to be about equality. Now it's about hating men and painting men as predators. And that's their magic word. And people like Louis C.K., you know, he's a comic and I'm kind of a newbie comic. Newbie documentarian. Document, is it documentary or documentarian? What the fuck? Will you fucking Google that shit? Because I'm telling you, I'm more comfortable behind the camera and I just want to tell the truth about what I see. I see a beautiful city. 90% of the city is golden and amazing. But that 10%, holy shit. Some selfish, selfish motherfuckers. And they've kept this town at $10 an hour for so long. And so as it fills up with men, you know, who are leaving places like Utah and Texas and maybe men starting over or maybe, who knows? There's all kinds of reasons people come to the woods. Jolene came at a heartbreak. Some people come to go to beautiful Fort Lewis. But this town is really run by about, you know, it's just a rich white town. And they can get $10 an hour labor. It's either cook or code. 
if you don't know how to code, go wash dishes. And then I got fired at the Irish embassy. Then I got a stay of execution. Hey, what's up, baby? What's up, baby? I'm talking to my right. Sorry. Anyway, nugger hug. That's a new policy, nugger hug, that I'm trying to implement. I'm Jehovah, Jehovah, King Raven. Jehovah's King. I'm Raven King. Hey, you want nugger hug, baby? Nugger hug. Hey, what's up, baby? I'll give you no. Okay, you want nugger hug. So that's a new motto we're calling ravens. And then when you go up to a raven, this is how you talk to a homeless person. You say, you're a child of God, nugger hug. They say, nug, give them a nug. Some good Colorado nugs. Beautiful cannabis. It's so weird that, you know. Here, in fact, uh, I talk about a lot about licensure and how licensure alone is a big driver of homelessness. Because, you know, in, here in Durango, you have to have about $100 to get, or $200 to get a, uh, a cannabis license to, to work, to, to, have a, to, to make a living. And how that, that, um, that system, or what do you want to call it, that, that practice of making a man get a license to work and how politically we're using that as a political tool. And, you know, if you want to just get rid of X amount of people in your industry, just raise the licensing fee to, I don't know, for me it was 200000 when I ran my mortgage company. I didn't have 200000 I only had about forty. I moved out here to day trade. I finally taught myself how to day trade. You know that story that I moved out here to San Francisco, or she moved here, finally taught myself how to day trade. I only had about 40000 That was borrowed money because I overpaid my employees. And Anyway, there's all kinds of reasons people go raving. I was just too good to my employees and too good to my, my customers for 10 years. I made a ton of money. I didn't take care of Jonathan. And then when my ex-wife wanted to really get rid of my custody, I said, bitch, no, 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 no. I'm going to make sure that you have court-ordered visitation. And I got court-ordered visitation. Of course, she never honored that. And then when you try to get your court-ordered visitation, they just say it's a civil matter. So men lose their kids slowly. You know, in fact, I went to jail in Littlefield, Texas, because I was trying to plan a summer vacation schedule. And my ex-wife says, oh, you know, we we're going to kind of get together and talk about it. And I said, we don't have to talk about it. Let's just email it. Let's be done. Let's commit to it. So I don't have to fight with you for my Texas 2503. You know that story. They threw me in jail when I held onto her car. Uh, as she was driving off with my kids on on my rightful um, custodial visit, and how custodial visits are never enforced, and so men lose their hearts, and then they, we kind of lose our our businesses because you can't really run a business effectively when you're you don't have a heart because your kids are being taken from you. But you know, feminism is a very strong, powerful force, and feminist and feminism people see that as power because. There is this now cottage industry of, well, just this week. I mean, what, twice a week we hear some woman uh, using sexual allegations to make money. You know, here in Durango, uh, it's only growing 1%. Fort Lewis is down about, it's a little over 5%. So when, when you have a recession or a depression, I think it's personally a depression. I don't think uh, people are really being 